Today's project is of course gonna be heavily inspired by the kinda controversial Microsoft Recall feature. So I really wanted to see if we can create our own version of this. My plan was to do this 100% locally, but the vision models just weren't good enough. The performance was not stable, so I had to kinda abandon that and just make a prototype using GPT-40 because that is kind of the far by the best vision model I have tried so far. So yeah, it's a bit shame, but I wanted it to be locally, but uh, yeah, that could be something for the future. So let me just go through kind of how we set this up and how I wanted this to work. So I divided this into three phases. So we have the record phase, we have the analyze phase, and to kind of use this, we have a rag phase. Uh, I'm going to explain that, but let's just start here on the record phase. So basically, when we fire up our script, this is going to screenshot our computer screen, of course. And it's going to save those screenshots and bring them to further analyze and put them into our RAG system, right? But I kind of wanted to uh, implement something that kind of monitor pixel changes on our screen, because we don't want to spam the same screenshot over and over again. So I implemented something that looks at our monitor and if there's a 5% pixel change to kind of the previous screenshot then it's gonna take a new screenshot and save that and bring it over to the analyze phase. I also implemented a step down here that GPT-40 creates a custom screenshot name uh, based on kind of the analyze uh, feature here from GPT-40 because we want to archive those screenshots so we can look them up later. That is kind of the idea behind the recall feature, right? If we go to the analyze phase now, you can see uh, when a screenshot is saved, it's going to be analyzed by GPT-40. So this is going to extract user actions, what happened in the screen, any URLs, and of course the name that is associated with the screenshot. And this is going to be put in our archive. Uh, but also the screenshot is saved to a new folder so we can look it up if we want to go back in time and see what we did in this exactly frozen moment in time, right? Uh, I think that's kind of how this Microsoft Recall feature works, so I thought it was pretty interesting and it, it does work. Uh, so let's just move on to kind of the rag phase. This is how we can actually use this system. And here you can kind of see, we just take the archive, that is kind of the user action, plus the link to the screenshot uh, we have saved in archive, and we create embeddings from this. Uh, this is done locally, so we are using uh, a local Ulama embeddings models, and we use Llama 3 to kind of search over that rag space, right? Uh, so here we can just search for, let's say, something like, uh, did I visit Discord yesterday? And then you can kind of find the associated screenshot when you did visit, let's say, Discord, what you talked about on Discord. Because you kind of get the recent action that you talked about on the Discord screenshot. And you get a name, so you can look up the screenshot and see exactly what you did. So that is basically the whole idea behind this. Uh, so now I think we're just going to take a quick look at the code. Kind of how I set this up. And let's bring it out in action and see if it actually works. But before we do that, if you want to learn more about how LLMs work, data analysis, science and all that stuff, take a look at today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Are you eager to dive into the world of data analysis or understand how large language models work? Then you're going to love Brilliant.org, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant turns complex subjects into engaging hands-on experiences that make learning fun and effective. I especially like the Building Regression Models course that is perfect for learners at any level. You learn how to visualize massive datasets, make better informed decisions from the bias theorem to multiple linear regression. Another favorite of mine is of course the How LLMs Work course. This immersive AI workshop lets you explore the mechanics of large language models, showing you how they build vocabulary and generate different outputs like poetry or cover letters. Brilliant's approach to learning is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lectures. By solving real problems, you build critical thinking skills and a powerful daily learning habit. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash allaboutai or just click the link in the description below. Go start your learning journey today. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now let's walk through some of the most important functions in our code to actually make this work. So I just want to start with the analyze screenshot functions because this is kind of the, the most important part, of course. <laughs> uh, 
you can see we are running the GPT-40 model. Uh, it's just so good. Like, it's by far the best vision model I ever tried. Uh, I just wish there was like an open source model that could be on this level soon. So we can make this 100% locally. I think I'll have bad cool that would be, but... Now it's like, should you... I don't even think you should use this. Because this is sending kind of your uh, proprietary data sometimes out uh, with the API and stuff. So this is just kind of a prototype for something hopefully we can have in the future. But it is really fun to play around with and it does work. But let's just focus on the code here now for a while. So you can see... Uh, so let's... Let me show you kind of the, the prompt I use here. Extract the most important information from what is happening in the image. Include URLs on the website if applicable. Because I want to be able to kind of extract the URLs I was on. Let's say I remember something I was on. I was on that web page, but I don't remember exactly the URL. Then I can kind of search up that information and find the URL I was on. So yeah, that is kind of the idea behind this. It's a pretty simple prompt, but it works for my my use case here. Okay, so now we kind of come to the chunking part. This is important for the rag, right? And this is kind of taken from my EC local rag setup. So we're gonna divide it into chunks of maximum thousand characters. And every... Yeah, how should you say this? Every action is kind of chunked into the history.txt so we can use it in rag to search up. So I just wanted to show you an example so you can see here, uh, here is kind of one action we took from a screenshot. So you can see we have the PNG image here that is associated with this, uh, with this uh, saved action. So the user was engaged in multiple activities on the computer, running a Python script, executing a Python script called recall in PowerShell terminal. And you can see reviewing a directory, and we have a directory path, working on a Canva project. So we got a lot of information from this. And we can also look up this image here. If we go to my folder now, you can see I have the archive, user activity, recall 12 Canva AI. So here you can see everything that happened in that image. So this is kind of associated with this uh, action, right? And we have another uh, image here. The user was watching a YouTube video called uh, Introducing Copilots PC by Microsoft. And this is our other screenshot, so you can see it here. So yeah, I think it's working pretty good. And that is kind of how we set this up. Uh, we also have a GPT-4 chat to kind of rewrite these queries. So you are an expert extracting information from a text. Uh, we use that. Uh, and here is kind of the compare screenshot function. So we take the previous screenshot and compare it with the new one and if kind of the difference in pixels is a set percentage here uh, then we're gonna execute on that screenshot because if I just leave my screen on like this there's no pixel changes so we're not gonna take a screenshot then only if the user does something else that is kind of the idea behind it and that is one I kind of understood that Microsoft is trying to do as well so I set the diff percentage to 5. I don't know what the optimal solution is here, uh, but I set it to 5 now. And it seems to be working pretty good. So yeah, you can see here the GPT-40 chat prompt is kind of... We feed in the result from the image description, right? And then we say from the image description above, extract the information. Uh, what the user is doing on the computer, include a URL if applicable. So the reason I kind of run it again with a new uh, function here is because I had some results just running it from this. Uh, that was not too good, so I tried to run it again over a new function just by feeding in the results and it seemed to work pretty good. So uh, I kind of left it like this. And here is kind of the relevant file name query. If we look at the names of our images, you can see my file name here is Microsoft Copilot's PC Keynote. And this file name comes from using the GPT-40 chat model. And generate a short, concise, relevant file name for the following description. This file name is quite important because uh, this can be used in our RAG phase to get keywords, so if we type Microsoft Copilot, 
this will kind of pop up in our rag search right that is why i want these file names to be relevant and not just some random name and yeah is there anything else to say here about the code it's pretty straightforward uh it kind of ends up at the end here that we are chunking uh, everything and putting it into this history text on kind of a new line so it's ready to be embedded in our rag model uh, i might do like a follow-up video on my member section if people are interested in diving deeper into this of course this code is going to be uploaded to the community github so if you want straight access to this just become a member of the channel follow the link in the description and I will invite you to our community GitHub and our community Discord. And yeah, at the end there, if we want to stop this, we can just keyboard interrupt and this will exit. Uh, other than that, it's just going to run in a true loop, true, true loop until we stop it. I also added this three second delay before starting because when we fire up our terminal here, uh, yeah, I just wanted a small sleep here. And yeah, that is basically it. Uh, to do this um, compare screenshots, we are using OpenCV2. And it seems to be working pretty good. So I think I just want to show you kind of in action now how this works and what we can do with this. Okay, so let's run our script now and let's kind of see how this works now. So uh, let's say I just wanted to start my day at working. So I'm just going to fire up the script. I'm just gonna go to this website here. I'm just gonna pretend I'm reading this. So hopefully now this has taken a screenshot of this, right? Uh, so I just wanna leave it here now because now you can kind of see it's measuring the different percentage. So let's say now we switch to this X post. Okay, so now we kind of changed our image and then you can see if we go back here, the percentage changed to 26%. And that means that we took a new screenshot, right? Because the pixels changed. And we take a look at this uh, post on X. And now we got a second different uh, percentage because we brought up the terminal. But if we let this just run now, we're probably just gonna stay on this. So now let's just, let's just operate the computer as normal. This is just gonna run in the background, right? So we can see here we are on kind of the local llama Reddit post. We can read a bit about this. Of course, this is not going to take screenshots every single second, so it's going to be a bit... It's not perfect, right? We can click onto this GitHub page. And hopefully we are collecting screenshots now as we are scrolling, but of course, it's not going to be perfect. So I think we're just going to stop it here now, and then we can kind of take a look at the results and how we can implement this into RagRite. So if we go back now to our history.txt, we can kind of reload this and we should have some more, yeah, information here. So you can see a Carpati GPT-2 reproduction LLMC. The user is reading a post uh, under a Carpati on X. Yes, we did that. The user is reading a post on local Llama, reading a post on GitHub, executing a Python script. That's true. And yeah, you can see this worked pretty good. Let's take a look at the images that is kind of associated with this. So let's take a look at the Carpati GPT-2 reproduction image. So we can just go here, Carpati-2. Uh, yes, so you can see this is the image of the, the Twitter post we read, right? Or the X post. So yeah, we can actually align this with our information and find the screenshot here. So I think the next step now is going to be to look at our rag and how we can embed this and start using our recall feature information. So here we are basically using exactly the setup I had on my EC local rag. You can find that that's open source. You can just follow the link in the description to find this code. So basically the only difference here is now that instead of uh, feeding in our vault, we called it uh, <laughs> in the previous version, we're just feeding in our history.txt, right? And embedding that and we can start searching over it. So let's just fire up the terminal here and kind of let's clear our cache first and then we can embed our new history here, right? So let's just run python recallrag.py uh, dash dash clear cache. So we kind of clear our previous cache, okay? And then we can generate new embeddings on history.txt. 
set embeddings to vault embeddings json and now we can start asking questions about our yeah documents but it is actually our recall uh, information right so let's try to ask i read a post about gpt2 on x but i forgot who the author was Okay, so we are fetching some information about GPT-2 here from our archive, right? According to your archive data, you read a post about uh, on yeah by Andre Carpati on X from Twitter about reproducing the GPT model. Okay, yeah, that's good. Let's also try to find our um, related screenshot. Do I have any PNG files about GPT-2? Okay, so you can see according to archive data, you have two PNG files related to GPT-2, reproducing GPT-2, GitHub, uh, recall diff percentage. Okay, so let's check this reproducing GPT-224 million 90 minutes. So we can go to our archive here and you can see reproducing GPT-2. So this is actually from the GitHub, so not exactly our X. Um, post but uh, yeah i guess it found something let's try to alter that and add x in maybe let's ask do i have any png files about gpt2 from x according to your archive data you have one png file yes gpt2 from x okay perfect so this is the carpati gpt2 reproduction llmc so let's see if that works and yeah perfect so if i was a bit more specific there i could actually find the post we took the screenshot of on X. So yeah, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy how this worked. And it is actually kind of how I wanted this to work. So this means that you can kind of get like a, imagine you get like a big storage here in your history and you get like a ton of different screenshots here. This could be helpful if you wanted to kind of track back and see what you did maybe yesterday and stuff like that. So I think it's working kind of how I wanted this to work with this rag face implementation. So yeah, that is basically what I wanted to share with you today. Like I said uh, in the video, if you want access to this, just follow the link in the description and become a member of the channel. I will probably upload this uh, code tomorrow. Uh, I might even do a more deep dive into how this exactly works if people want that. Uh, but yeah, I found it interesting. It's a shame that we can't do it or that I couldn't actually do it locally uh, yet. Uh, maybe some of you can list. If you actually find a good way to do this locally, please leave a comment. And I want to see it and I want to try it and maybe we can do something together. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think it worked pretty good. I'm very happy how it turned out. And it was not that hard to implement. And I think we can kind of upgrade this in the future, and that's going to be very interesting. Uh, so yeah, should you use this? Probably no, because you're sending a lot of private information over the API. And yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use this actively, but it was a fun prototype to showcase what we might have uh, running locally in the future. We just need a bit of a better vision model, and I think everything should work pretty good. Uh, other than that, yeah. Thank you for tuning in and I got some cool projects coming up so look out for that and don't forget to check out brilliant.org link in the description. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again on Sunday.